Okay, this is our last video for booklet number one. And uh, the last thing that we want to learn about on the periodic table is metals and non-metals. So I hope you watch the brain pop video on metals first. It's quick and it's super helpful um, for going through this booklet. Okay, so um, three categories, metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So uh, metals are the most common form of matter, okay? So about 75% of the periodic table is made out of metallic elements. So when the metals are found on the left-hand side of the periodic table and make up approximately three quarters of all the elements. Well, which makes sense. If I said it's 75%, then yeah, three quarters is right, okay? Um, they form cations. And you're like, oh, what's that name again? So what does this mean? Or you've heard something, this is positive ions, which we'll talk about shortly, okay? And they have positive valences. Okay. Right on, so take out your periodic table, okay? And we're gonna color in all of the metals. No, actually we'll do that at the end, we'll wait, okay? Yes, we'll come back to that. But you'll need three pencil crayons for that. Okay, so here, properties of metals. Next up, uh, Meta uh, properties of metal. They have a high metallic uh, luster or shiny. Okay, like silver, that's why we use them to make jewelry. Okay, they have a high electrical and thermal conductivity. That's why we use copper wiring uh, to wire our houses so we can flow electricity around. Okay, um, they are ductile. So they can be drawn into a wire, and I don't mean drawn with a pencil, but like pulled into a wire. Okay, uh, they have, um, they are malleable. Okay, which means it can be hammered into sheets. This is why our, it's a good material to use for our cars. When we get a dent, we can hammer it back into where it's supposed to go. Okay, they're very dense which means they're very heavy. They have a lot of atoms in one cubic centimeter, okay? Um, they have high melting points, okay? So thank goodness, because we wouldn't want our food to melt on the barbecue if our barbecue was made of metal and then melted if it got hot, okay? Um, and they are very elastic which is kind of like malleable, okay? They can be put back into there. Did it go on the other page? Yeah, original shape. Okay, and metals plus other metals. So when we mix two different kinds of metals together, we get something called an alloy. An example of that is copper and tin, which together make bronze which makes me wonder why they use those for like Olympic medals, because gold is a pure metal, silver is a pure metal. Why do they use bronze? Hmm, curious about that. Okay, uh, after metals, we have non-metals, okay? Uh, non-metals are on the right side of the periodic table. Okay? They make up about 15%. If you're like, ah, uh, Miss Laviak, wouldn't it be 25%? Mm -mm -mm. Not quite, just watch, okay? They make up about 15% of all the elements on the periodic table are non-metals, okay? Uh, non-metals demonstrate properties that are opposite of metals, okay? They are not conductors of electricity, thank goodness, otherwise when we're outside in a lightning storm, that's electricity, and then everybody who'd be outside would be electrocuted. Okay, they're not shiny or malleable. Okay, and, <clears throat> and if you look even at the periodic table, right? Look, most of the states of metals at room temperature are all solids. 
But if you look at um, the non-metals, many of them are gases, right? That's what the little cloud, the little cloud means. Okay, and the last group is the metalloids. Okay, metalloids are in between metals and non-metals. Okay, they border. Oh, huh, I just put that. I didn't need to do that twice. Oh well, they border both metals and non-metals and have properties of both. Okay, there's nothing on the next side, is there? No. So now let's shade this in. Okay, so we're going to draw, we're going to shade in the metalloids first. Okay, so and our metalloids um, are the first seven that follow the staircase and go up to polonium, but they do not include aluminum. Okay, so I'm going to shade in boron and silicone, and this is why. I wanted to wait until the end to shade it so that we had the metalloids first, okay? And then germanium and arsenic and antimony and tellurium and polonium. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we don't have to memorize. We just go there. They're the elements on either side of the staircase up to polonium, but they don't include aluminum, okay? So I'm going to add that to my key here. I'm just going to shade in a little bit of purple. And those are my metalloids. Okay. And now I'm going to shade in my metals. So this staircase here, it's like a thicker black line. And if you don't have one that's a little bit thicker, you could... You can make it thicker, but everything from here on is all metals, uh, but don't include hydrogen, okay? Including these ones below, because these ones fit right here, okay? So what I'd like you to do is to color in everything else on the left side of the metalloids. Okay, so here we can color in aluminum, and this is also why we just outlined everything. That way we could tell which family everything belonged to, but we would group them for metals and non-metals and metalloids by shading them in. Okay. okay. And these ones too. Okay, so my yellow is my metal, so I'm gonna add that here to my key. Oops, sorry. So my yellow is my metals. And I'm gonna use orange to be my non-metals. So now everything to the right of the metalloids and to the right of that staircase is going to be a non-metal. And we don't include hydrogen because hydrogen, although it's in that first column and it has one valence electron, it's a gas, okay? Um, but it also has properties of um, uh, alkali metals, but it, it's not really a metal, okay? So we just leave it as its own family. So these are the noble gases. Right on. There you go. And now you have this super awesome periodic table to use as we go through the rest of chemistry. Excellent. Nice job.